All right, it is Sunday. <laughs> what an intro, Kraken, as always. Sunday the 18th of October 2020. I'm currently reading Crow in this really nice uh, old Favour and Favour edition by Ted Hughes. Not far in it, but I've flagged out a few uh, poems that I want to talk about already, so I will be doing a video on that soonish. Uh, yeah, and I'm just cracking on and being productive, really, so I'm just going to film a few bits. I need to do my next radio show at some point. Well, I need to do it by 7 p.m. on Tuesday, and it's so that's I've got 48 hours to be fine. So I'll probably start that later. We'll see. Depends when I go to bed. That's that's the start of the video for you. Strap in. All right, it is Sunday. <laughs> what an intro, Kraken, as always. Sunday, the 18th of October 2020. I'm currently reading Crow in this really nice uh, old Favour and Favour edition by Ted Hughes. Not far in it, but I've flagged out a few uh, poems that I want to talk about already, so I will be doing a video on that soonish. Uh, yeah, and I'm just cracking on and being productive, really, so I'm just going to film a few bits. I need to do my next radio show at some point. Well, I need to do it by 7 p.m. on Tuesday, and it's so that's I've got 48 hours to be fine. So I'll probably start that later. We'll see. Depends when I go to bed. That's that's the start of the video for you. Strap in. Hello, I'm currently watching The Trial of the Ch Chicago 7 on Netflix. It's got Sasha Baron Cohen in it, um, but playing quite a serious role, which is good because he is a good actor. He's also a very intelligent dude as well. Um, but I'm not always on board with his comedy stuff. I did like Ali G, but other than that, I've not really been into him. But yeah, uh, he's good in this. I mean, all the actors have been great in it, um, and it's just a pretty fascinating storyline, um, like social justice -y stuff, um, sort of during the 60s when these people went on trial for inciting a riot and did they incite a riot well they sort of did i guess spoilers <laughs> but watch it on netflix anyway if you've got a couple of hours to kill because it's very good oh hello how long have you been there i didn't know you were there no i didn't know you were there oh when you're having a clean i'm sorry if i disturbed you so yes, last time I talked to you, I was reading Crow by Ted Hughes. Um, so I pretty much finished reading that. And now, I can't tell you what... Oh, I can. I can just about see it. It's Grey J. Wall, The Sound of Revolution, uh, which I was kindly sent by Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Poetry Press. And so, yeah, it's like beat poetry, basically. I'm very much enjoying it. Uh, Biggie's here. We're just chilling, aren't we, Biggie? Next up, I'm going to read Santa is Coming to Tamworth. So Tamworth is the town that I grew up in, and it's just this cute little kid's book, so I thought, why not? Why not? And I picked it up while I was away as well, so I picked it up in Tamworth too. Uh, it was just my boss texting me, because we're doing a Christmas thing. Because uh, we were trying to get a vegan, vegan food lady to come and do a bit of food selling at our thing, but I don't think she's going to be able to. Well, she didn't reply to my message, basically. So yeah, anyway, that's what I'm reading. I'm currently reading shorter books at the moment just to take my number of owned and unread books down just a tad because it's over 150 at the moment and I did get down to like 42. I very nearly finished reading my bedtime book which is uh, The Complete Aesop's Fables um, and I've also been reading a French BD, a Bandes Dessinaire. I believe it's called, uh, was, oh, Mon Maitre Seher, I think is how I would pronounce it. I don't know. And um, yeah, it's like just comics about some animals basically so it's good and i've been coming along i've been uh, practicing my high valerian let's have let's have a look at me little my duolingo see how i'm doing uh so my high valerian i can say like uh i don't know what, what could i say i could say read sas uh nuha brutzi dane isa so I just said, hello, my name is Dane in High Valerian. You guys probably know a little bit of High Valerian as well, because there's obviously Vala da Hyris, which is all men must serve, and Vala Mogulis, which is all men must die. What else have we got? Should we do a little bit? Let's do a bit of, um, let's practice my High Valerian here. All right, see how we get on. Okay, so we've got to translate, all men must die, farewell. Well, we just we just said, uh, Vala Mogulis. Morgulis. And then farewell is uh, Geros Ilas. Geros Ilas. There we go. Let's have a look. Well, I've got my 173 day streak. Um, I am losing out to Charlie again. Here's Charlie Heathcote. Oh my God, he's... Oh my Lord. He's done like 11,000 experience today. Look at that. That 
you can see he's beaten me on most days, but very specifically beaten me a lot today. And today's been one of my best days as well. I think he's probably trying to win the Diamond League, which I've already done because I'm badass, obviously. So, let's have a look. I have... So I've got 26,481 French experience, 8,291 German, and 688 High Valyrian. And that's pretty representative of my skills in each language. But I'm pretty sure I'm never going to need to speak High Valyrian. Mmm. Gerasilas. I'm now watching Cinnamon Toast Ken play Amnesia Rebirth, and I feel like it's 2002. Alright, let's... 2010, let's be fair. Hello, the Asda shop came, so there is crap all over my floor that I need to put away. This is my big shop where I like stock up on stuff, so there's loads of bottles of lemonade and various other bits and bobs on there. Yeah. Um, okay, so what day is it? It's Tuesday the 27th. Um, I'm currently just being productive and stuff, I guess. I went to meet Susie for a drink earlier. Let's get comfortable. Oh, yes. Went to meet Susie for a drink earlier. I'm still not drinking, so I had a non-alcoholic cider, which is very nice. She had a pint of Foster's, which I'm sure was also very nice. <laughs> um, and yeah, um, we're officially a thing now. Um, we had a very sweet conversation, so now I guess I could talk about her as my girlfriend. So, yes. So now it's, it's no longer, oh, I went to hang out with Susie again. She's s someone. <laughs> Um, oh, I gave her a copy of Local Haunts as well because my author copy from Regina arrived today and I'd already bought a copy uh, myself, although I didn't have a bookmark, so now I've got uh, a Local Haunts bookmark. But yeah, I gave the spare copy to Susie because she helped me to create the Local Haunts tag and uh, film all that, so it'll be interesting to see her take on it. Um, she might be doing a full audiobook of a stone's throw as well. Um, she asked if she could, so why not so I might lend her my microphone oh I've got a new microphone where is it it's around here somewhere I've already lost it um, but I got a clip-on microphone I'm gonna try it in a little bit and um, I need to find a decent software for recording the audio on my phone actually but it's a clip-on lapel mic that I can plug into my phone and so it's just more less cumbersome than carrying my massive um, blue snowball mic around and because I have to take my laptop with that as well and I've also got a new tripod, um, basically because Susie, like, she studied media and is really into f films and all this kind of stuff. So she's kind of inspired me a bit more as well. So we do have Madam Lord Literature and Madam Media, which I'll link to below, which we're going to do some combined videos on. Which, those will be the really sleek, nicely produced ones, because she's going to do the editing <laughs> and the filming. But hopefully I'll get a little bit better from learning from her as well. Um, I... I do know, like, I'm not using my full YouTube video creating powers at the moment, I guess. I could do more than I'm currently doing. It just adds a lot of time to each of the videos, and I'd rather keep my fairly constant releases out than, like, I'd rather do six videos a week of a lower quality than one a week or whatever. Um, but having said that, you know, there are still places where I can improve that won't add too much time and stuff. Um, and it's not, I don't know, it, I think it's, for me as a creator, that's what I like from the creators I watch, because I'm quite happy watching people who just sit and film in front of a, uh, you know, just film on their uh, phone or whatever. So, um, you know, I personally, from the channels that I enjoy, I would rather they posted more often than spend longer amounts to do really polished videos. Um, but everyone's different, you know, so we'll probably co we'll cover that off with the two channels. We'll have <laughs> Dane Reads, where it's just me talking crap about books. And then we'll have Lord Literature and Madam Media, where we'll do more like in-depth analysis, but with tighter editing and just like cooler videos, basically. Reading-wise, what was... Oh, I'm still reading If Cats Disappeared From The World by Genki Kawamura. It's uh, very good so far, actually. Um, I finished in bed last night my bedtime book, which was Aesop, The Complete Fables, and I did enjoy this. I posted my favourite one. I think it was called... What was it called? It was called something like The, the Ass Who Shat In The River, I think. <laughs> was it? Oh, it was The Camel Who Shat In The River. 144. A camel was crossing a swiftly flowing river. He shat and immediately saw his own dung floating in front of him, carried by the rapidity of the current. What is that there? He asked himself. That which was behind me, I now see pass in front of me. This applies to a situation where the rabble and the idiots hold sway rather than the eminent and the sensible. 
Now, once again, this fable cannot be of Greek origin, since Greek camel cult since Greek camels, if they existed, would never do anything so improper. Well, I'm glad for that little clarification there. Uh, I'd probably give like a 3.5, maybe 3.75 out of 5. It wasn't the easiest of reading at times, because um, they start to get a little bit repetitive. But overall, I'm glad I read them, and obviously Aesop and his fables are, you know, huge cultural uh, touch points. So yeah, I'm going to crack on with If Cats Disappeared From The World. I might even finish that tonight. Don't know what I'm going to read next yet. I haven't decided. Maybe the Horrible Histories um, Royal Air Force Museum special. I don't know. We'll see. And I can also start reading a new bedtime book. And I have a Shakespeare play that I was going to read. Um, and I also want to finish the French BD Bandes Dessinaire that I'm currently reading. So that is where I am at. Oh, and it's launch day for me. My uh, new novel is finally out. Although I still don't have my final printed copies. They're on the way. And my radio show went out today and I forgot to... Well, I didn't have a chance to promo it. Mate, I'm so busy at the moment. I'm so busy. Yo, it is Wednesday. The 21st, I think, of October. I've received 25 copies of meat in the post today. So here is the final product. 450 pages of horror goodness. Uh, very happy with it. I hope you guys enjoy it too if you're planning on picking up a copy. I picked in a random, that's page 305. Still got a chunk to go there. I'm quite proud of how long it is. Um, but also the interior looks really cool as well. Let me show you. So it's got the map on one side and the section header. This is done by Steve Woodcock, my uh, designer. I've worked with him on my poetry collection in the past. It's very cool. Um, I finished reading yesterday If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura. I am now reading Frightful Flight by Nick Arnold and Tony DeSauls. It is a horrible histories book. Um, and I'm enjoying it so far. I'm probably going to do a review of that too. Um, I'm off to my girlfriend's later and I can say that now. <laughs> to watch. Well, we're going to have um, vegan fajitas and then we're going to watch The Mist. Uh, the movie. I might have bigged it up too much. I don't know. She she was an intermediate and, and I think from a filmmaking perspective the ending of that movie is like nothing I've ever seen any other movie do before. So I just think she'll appreciate it. Um, and also because of the way I've managed to do it I've hyped it up quite a lot because I really want her to watch The Mist, you know? And I really want to watch it as well. Like I was saying to her if, if we don't watch it soon I'm just going to watch it. Um... But yeah, um, I haven't hyped up the ending in particular. I've just hyped up the film in general. So hopefully she'll still get hit like a steamroller when the ending comes in. That's the plan. And um, I have this, which came in the post today as well. This is a box of sci-fi books. So I'm going to go and film myself hauling them. Um, I'm not going to read all of them. Some of them are duplicates, but like we have some Asimov there, some more Asimov down there. And whatever I don't keep, I can sell on. Doctor Who and the Planet of the Daleks, Terence Dix. So yeah, gonna go investigate. Oh my fucking He shook his head and slapped his leg and howled. We're you listening to The Body to by Stephen wet. King. I'm gonna be in trouble. That Tupper babe saw me. She, she thought it was a firecracker. Besides, old Thunder Jug's Tupper can't see past the end of her own nose, you know that. Thinks wearing glasses would spoil her pretty face. He put one palm against the small of his back and bumped his hips and got laughing again. Well, I don't care. That was a mean trick, Chris. Really. Come on, Gordy. He put a hand on my shoulder. I didn't know it was loaded. Honest to God, I swear on my mother's life. I just took it out of my dad's bureau. He always unloads it. He must have been really drunk <laughs> when he put it away the last time. In the Dick and Jane crime. Yo, I'm very tired. It's family. quarter to 11 in the morning. I've, I've been up since five, but I guess I didn't get that much sleep last night. I'm currently listening to the audiobook of The Body by Stephen King because once I've finished listening to this, I've effectively reread different seasons. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's all right. It was my least favorite story my first time round, and it's still my least favorite story now. Um, I've never seen Stand By Me. Um, I was talking to uh, Susie about it, and she's never seen it either. So we might watch it together, maybe, because it is meant to be like a very like important milestone film. But I don't know, because I don't really like the book, so I can't imagine I'm going to like the movie much. 
I finished reading my Horrible Histories book, which I have no idea where it is, probably in my bags. Oh, here it is. I read uh, Horrible Science, Frightful Flight by Nick Arnold and Tony DeSauls. I uh, picked this up from the RAF, RAF Museum at Cosford when I went there with my mum. It was pretty good. I've tabbed it out to do some um, a review of it. And now I'm currently reading Switch Bitch by Roald Dahl. Um, so these are four of his stories. They're stories for adults. People don't necessarily realise that Dahl wrote for adults. But um, also interestingly, all four of them are about sex and they were all originally published in Playboy. And the first one was pretty racist, but I don't know whether it was Dahl being racist. No, I, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that he's, he was anti-Semitic, but, um, or whether it was just his character, because his character kind of got his comeuppance at the end. Well, he got syphilis, so, you know. But I am enjoying it still, and as you can see, I've tabbed quite a lot to talk about this one. I've also, all my collect our copies of Meat came in the post. I think I told you about that, so I've been signing and getting a bunch of those ready to distribute. And I've got here, this is three Bill Bryson books that I bought, so I'm going to go and haul those now. So hard. Hello, I am tired, Dane. I'm listening to The Body by Stephen King, so it's the last of the... the oh, I filmed earlier, didn't I? I then slept, because I was very tired, and I'm still very tired. But yeah, I'm still listening to The Body. I've also caught up with my YouTubes as well. I think I've only got, by the looks of it, a couple of hours at most left of The Body. Uh, it's alright. I'm just looking forward to getting it finished to be honest and then I'm gonna re-watch the ending of Red Dwarf Because Red Dwarf is one of my favorite TV shows ever and it's also what I watch in bed before I go to sleep um, And so basically Netflix only has the first eight series and then I have like whatever brings us up to date after that on my computer So I watch Red Dwarf and then catch up uh, with like the new episodes and stuff so yeah, I'm still reading Switch, bitch. I don't know why I'm filming this, because I have nothing to update you on. Because, uh, I don't know. Pussy ass little run, and I'm gonna make you- Yeah, Biggie, you, you pint-sized pussy ass little run, or whatever he just said. I'm gonna shoot you. Yeah. I'm sorry, mate. You can call me a dickhead if you'd like. Oh God, now, now, now TweetDeck's pinging at me and I can't handle it. Oh God, I've uploaded the wrong thing. Oh dear, oh dear, Biggie. That is trying to do too much shit and getting confused by it all again. Right, there we go. I'm on part 26 of 34 of the body. So I think less than an hour to go. Um, and I'm still reading Switch Bitch as well. Slowly but surely working through this big old stack of stuff I have to post. Oh, there's a lot of it. There's just a lot to do. Oh, piss off. Oh, no. I, oh, dickhead shit. That's why I didn't close it. I meant to mute. I had a... Uh, I had a tweet that I'd mostly written and prepared to post and it was in TweetDeck and TweetDeck was pinging at me so I closed TweetDeck to stop it pinging but forgot to post the tweet so now I have to rewrite the tweet. <laughs> but it's okay because it stopped pinging and that's the main thing I was worried about. I don't have anything else to update you on, I really just wanted to show you Biggie. Hello, it is, is it Friday night? It is, it's Friday the 23rd of October. Uh, I'm currently just being productive and stuff. Uh, Susie's coming over tomorrow, which means I need to tidy my flat. I also have a whole bunch of eBay packages that are due to send out, so um, I've been like wrapping those up tonight for me to dispatch them tomorrow. I'm sitting here repeatedly refreshing eBay to try and get eBay to work, but no joy. Bit of a pisser, to be honest. Um, so I guess that just leaves me with my filming. So, oh, here we go, it's finally loaded. Um, basically, while I edit my videos, I also manage my eBay store as well. So, um, do a bit of multitasking. As I said, I finished reading... Uh, okay, so last time I saw you, I just finished reading Switch Bitch by Roald Dahl, which was very good. Uh, then I read Frankenstein According to Spike Milligan, probably a 3.75 out of 5. It was pretty funny. Um, it's you, it, you wouldn't like it unless you were a Spike Milligan fan and a, a Frankenstein fan, I guess, because a lot of the jokes play upon what actually happens in the plot as well. So um, it's probably not for everybody, but I did enjoy it uh, for what it was. Then I read this, uh, Carlos Koala's The Great Artist Counting Book. It's very cute. It uh, teaches kids to count in like different artist styles. So nine Warhol Warthogs, look. Uh, so we have Carlos Koala's. What else? We've got Pollux Poodles here. So um, my friend Fran, well she might sort of my boss at the art centre, she told me about it and I thought it sounded cool so I've gone ahead and got myself a copy. 
and I burned through that. And now I'm reading The Golden Apples of the Sun, which is a short story collection by Ray, Ray Bradbury. And I'm enjoying it so far, but I can't say I have a huge amount to say about it, to be honest. But what the hey, it's I. En oh, regard, Monsieur Steve. Salut, Monsieur Steve. Beaucoup s'amuser aujourd'hui. Tes cheveux. Oh, merci, t'as remarqué. I was wearing a wig yesterday. You probably saw it. Um, I'm gonna pimp it out here as well. Um, but yes, uh, Susie came over and we filmed a video for our new channel, uh, Lord Literature and Madam Media, which I will link to below. Um, so that's where we're gonna put our collaboration videos and we're gonna talk about books and movies and other art and stuff like that. Maybe any like vlogs of places we visit and stuff. Uh, we'll see really, but uh, yeah, check that out, link below. I'm currently just chilling here. I'm finishing off reading. Oh, Biggie's behind me. I'm just finishing off reading uh, The Golden Apples of the Sun by Ray Bradbury, uh, which I've been enjoying quite a lot. Um, well, I say quite a lot. It's probably like a 3.5 out of 5. It's got some good stories in there and some poor ones. I would say, like, more bad than good, maybe, but then the good ones are really good. There was a really good one I liked. Uh, that was it had like a lot of social commentary in it because this painter was like using this working class family's house as a place to do his uh, a photographer sorry this photographer was using a working class family's house to take photo uh, photographs and they were like do you think our crack walls exist only for your amusement and all this stuff um and it just highlighted the different the like the differences between different classes and income brackets i suppose so yeah it was good uh, i'm going to finish that and then next up I'm going to read this poetry collection, which is Vertigo to Go by Brandon Booth Jones, uh, which was sent to me by Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Poetry Press. So I'll be doing that soon. But anyway, as it's Sunday, that seems like a good place to end this week's vlog. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books we've talked about this week. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Au revoir.